Apples themselves are great, but it's not because of the juice in them, but rather, perhaps, primarily what's found in the peel. Within the last year, half a dozen studies have touted the benefits of apple peels. For example, this one in the Journal of Nutrition and Cancer, the anti-proliferative effects of apple peel extract against cancer cells. We know the more apples we eat, the lower our apparent risk of several cancers. The peels are the really good part, yet are often discarded. For example, apple peel is a waste product of dried apple manufacturing. In one little country, Chile, they throw away 9,000 tons of apple peels a year. It's like 20 million pounds. What a tragedy. So these researchers decided to see what we're missing. Here are two cell lines of human prostate cancer and two of human breast cancer, growing merrily away in petri dishes, the little black dots you see. They're blissfully unaware that researchers at the University of Wisconsin were at Whole Foods buying some organic gala apples. The peels were thrown in a blender and a tiny bit dripped on the unsuspecting cancer cells, and then a bit more and a little more, and as you can see by the end, neither the prostate nor breast cancer cells were very happy about it. Now, this ain't chemo, this is just apple peels. How do they work? Well, to obtain a clue regarding the mechanism that determine the effect of apple peels on the tumor suppressor protein, maspin, uh, inside the cancer cells. Maspin is a tumor suppressor gene that has been shown to have tumor suppressor, anti-angiogenic, anti-metastatic properties in both breast and prostate cancer cells. The tumor cells found a way to turn this tumor suppressor gene off, and apple peels apparently turned it back on. An upregulation of this tumor suppressor gene as you add more and more of the apple peel extract to each of the cancer types. They conclude apple peels may possess strong anti-proliferative effects against cancer cells, and they should not be discarded from the diet. Daily dried apples versus daily dried plums impact on cardiovascular disease risk factors in postmenopausal women. Uh, first thing I thought was, well, was the study funded by the U.S. Apple Association or the International Prune Association? I could bet what the results would be, but turns out neither. Just our taxpayer dollars hard at work. Great. So what'd they find? 160 older women randomly assigned to a dried apple group or a dried plum group, and followed for a year a dozen dried apple rings a day, or about eight prunes. And within three months, a significant drop in cholesterol in the apple, but not prune, group, which stayed down through the rest of the study. In terms of inflammation, both dried fruit regimens lowered C-reactive protein levels about the same, though perhaps prunes may have cause a quicker decrease in inflammation, whereas dried apples may result in a greater decrease overall. Uh, Twelve apple rings is equivalent to eating about mm, two apples a day. They think that the cholesterol-lowering properties of apples may be due to its unique pectin fiber composition, which may increase fecal excretion of bile, though the apple phytonutrients themselves, even without the fiber, appear to lower cholesterol on their own. What about dried figs? The California Fig Board did not want to be left out, sponsors of both Fig Fest and Fig Feast, as well as this recent study. 14 figs a day. That's a lot of figs for five weeks, and nothing. Daily consumption of figs did not reduce bad cholesterol. And finally, what about dates? Four or five dates a day for a month, and again, nothing. Though, if anything, they did tend to bring down triglyceride levels a bit, uh, which is surprising given the sugar content in dates. Uh, a recent study on the glycemic index of dates found them surprisingly low. Uh, the open circles are what straight sugar water does to your blood sugar, and uh, here's that same amount of sugar, but in date form. 
states beat out other common fruits in terms of containing more vitamins and more minerals, in fact touted as the richest source of dietary minerals, but because they're dried, they have about five times more calories than fresh fruits, you know, ounce per ounce. And so in terms of nutrient density, they're really quite comparable to these other fruit, uh, though uh, apples clearly have them beat when it comes to lowering cholesterol. There are many ways to compare the healthfulness of different foods. One can compare nutrient content, uh, for example. So if you were interested in antioxidants, you might compare vitamin C levels. If you did that for our two most popular fruits, apples and bananas, based on vitamin C content, uh, bananas would appear twice as healthy— 10 mg in a banana compared to only 5 mg in an apple. But you know, vitamin C is just one of thousands of different phytonutrients in fruits and vegetables. Turns out the vitamin C in apples accounts for less than 1% of an apple's total antioxidant activity. Here's the total antioxidant content of a red delicious apple. Here's how much the vitamin C in the apple contributes. You can hardly even see it. Even though there's only 5 mg of vitamin C in a small apple, it has the antioxidant equivalent of 1,500 mg of vitamin C. I've reviewed before how taking that much vitamin C straight in a supplement might actually have a pro-oxidant effect and cause DNA damage. But you can get three times the antioxidant power eating a single apple without the adverse effects. Of course, there's more than just vitamin C in bananas, too. In fact, I was surprised to see the study out of Harvard suggesting that not only blueberries and strawberries, but bananas were significant sources of anthocyanins, the, the red, blue, violet phytonutrients found in berries. Maybe I underestimated bananas. They are, after all, technically berries. Still, I'm looking at these three fruits, and I'm thinking, you know, I see some anthocyanins here and here, but not seeing much you know, red, blue, or violet here. Now, wild bananas are a different story. Uh, there's anthocyanins in blue, purple, orange-red, red-purple, and pink-purple bananas, right? but none in yellow. So the Harvard researchers were challenged on it, and they said, look, you know, we just took values from the USDA, and it turns out USDA apparently made a mistake. No anthocyanins in bananas, and despite twice the vitamin C, bananas were beat out by apples in terms of overall antioxidant power. But that's just measuring the ability of these fruits to quench an oxidation reaction in a test tube. It'd be nice to measure actual biological activity. For example, in this apple study, they also measured the ability of apple extracts from both peeled and unpeeled apples to suppress the growth of human cancer cells growing in a petri dish, compared to control. Wouldn't it be great to be able to compare that kind of superpower between different fruits? Well, now we can. Here's a graph of cancer cell proliferation versus increasing concentrations of the 11 most common fruits eaten in the United States. They decided to use human liver cancer for this study. If you drip water on these cancer cells as a control, nothing happens. right? They start out powering away at 100% growth, and they keep powering away at 100% growth. And pineapples, pears, and oranges don't do much better. Peaches start pulling away from the pack. At high peach concentrations, cancer cell proliferation drops about 10%, but apples, excuse me, bananas and grapefruits work about four times better, dropping cancer growth rates by about 40%. Red grapes, strawberries, and apples do even better, cutting cancer cell growth up to half at only half the dose. But these two fruits are the winners. 
causing a dramatic drop in cancer proliferation at just tiny doses. Lemons and cranberries. So if you look at the effective dose required to suppress liver, cell, uh, liver cancer cell proliferation, apples are more powerful than bananas, but cranberries win the day. And there was no effective dose listed for orange, pear, or pineapple, since they didn't appear to affect this cancer cell growth at all.